Thursday's upon us. It is. So we're going to go back to uh, John 6. And um, I don't even know that we need to read all of it, John. Don't Maybe just so. the first couple verses. Sure. Even. Um, our, our text, if you want to pause and read the whole thing, is John 6, 51 to 58. Um, John and I really just want to focus on the first uh, couple verses here. Uh, of course, the later verses will inform yeah. what we talk about, but uh, you don't need them to get the full... You've heard us talk about you know, reading them a couple of times right. this week. Right. So it's John 6, 51 to 58, but we'll only be reading uh, first verse or so. So Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. So, John, I want to talk about Legoing my ego. All right. All right. <laughs> so, we haven't talked um, about that yet. In particular, um, in particular, um, Jesus saying, I am. And um, we could talk about a little bit the, the origin, but we call these statements the ego a me statements because it originates out of the Greek, mm -hmm. which is. Ego, I, a me, am. Mm -hmm. Ego, a me. Um, and Jesus has a lot of these statements. I am the bread of life. Mm -hmm. I am the living water. Shepherd. I am the good shepherd. The gate. I am the gate. Um, I am the right. way, the truth, and the, the life. life. Yep. Um, There's several There's a more. couple more. Yeah. So Jesus says this says these statements a lot and theologians and pastors grab a hold of them don't we yep they're good metaphors i think for for preaching particularly of how do we make real you know what jesus is saying and, and of course jesus teaches looking at what people would see every day and he's using those images to get them to do the very same thing of i understand what he's saying and we're using those images to, to preach and teach what right. what the gospel means for us today. Yeah. And they and they they have a they have a deeper meaning mm -hmm. for us as well because they originate back out of the Old Testament this sense of I am. Mm -hmm. Um and if you've been in our small groups at all over the years, uh, we've encountered the story of Moses at the burning bush. And Moses saying to God at the burning bush, you know, but if I go to the people, the Israelites, and they ask me who has sent you, who should I say has sent me? And uh, God responds, tell them I am has sent you, or I am who I am has sent you. Um, which is, uh, in some ways, it's kind of like, yeah, tell them I am has sent you. And it's like, I am who? Yep. <laughs> I am what? Yes. Um, and it, it kind of leaves him out there, but it also prevents us from simply putting God in a box and saying, this is all God is and nothing more. Um, but rather, I think in the Old Testament through Moses and beyond, and even in the ego Amy statements in the New Testament, God is what God does. In many ways and so if you were to say to God if he was standing there who are you he wouldn't necessarily just say oh well this is who I am blah, blah, blah. he would say I am the good shepherd I am the way and the truth and the life and, and in that, I don't know that you get a solid answer, but you have to look at the characteristics of what water of life does, the characteristics of what a good shepherd would do. Um, what does it mean to be living water in a desert yep. region, right? Mm -hmm. What does that mean to us? And it means different things to different people at different yep. times and in different places. 
And in that way, we're not limiting God into a box, but God becomes many things all at once, I guess. Never one thing. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think kind of along that line too, whenever you have that sort of ego and me statement, you have a, you, you end up with Jesus revealing who God is through who Jesus is. You mm-hmm. have this sort of, um, like here in this passage is, you know, as the Father lives, so I live also, and those who eat of my flesh and drink of my blood will live forever. So you have... And abide in him, right? Yep. yep. So you have this sort of, you know, we ask those questions of who is God, and God gives us the answer of, you know, I'm the good shepherd, I'm, you know, the way, the truth, and the life, I am the gate. And we go, oh, okay, great. But then you have Jesus showing us tangibly what that looks like, where, where God, you know, we want God to be inside of a box, and God gives us sort of abstract, you know, answers to this. But then you have Jesus going, you know, those who've seen me have seen my Father also. So you have this sort of tension, too, of, you know, like even a couple of verses before this, Jesus talks about, you know, the, the, the one who has sent me, you know, I, who, I'm the bread of life come down from heaven, sent by my Father. And you go, oh, you get that picture widens even more of, you know, you know God is the baker of the bread of life, maybe. Um, Jesus is the bread of life, and what does that what does that look like? And Jesus reveals God through His own mission and mm-hmm. ministry for us. Yeah. So there's always kind of when you have those statements of ego, a me, I am. To, I think to your point, God says it initially, and when Jesus says it, He brings God with, yeah. even though it's in a little bit different time and different context. God is always brought into that as that sort of legacy of I am. I am I am in a maybe new and different way than you're used to. Yeah. It's familiar words in a different setting. Yeah. And I think what's important for people, and I think the reason why I really wanted to bring it up today and the reason we talked about it ahead of time and wanting to, to bring it into today's discussion is as we work through scripture and as you are reading devotional work or whatever, when you see Jesus saying in quotes somewhere, I am, like, stop. Mm-hmm. You know, stop for a minute. Because I think even out of John, I think even in front of Pilate, you know, you know, I am not the king of this world. If I was the king of this world, my people would be fighting to. Yeah. Look at what he's saying. And that's what John was talking about. He's using this imagery in a way that confounds what you actually think, using things that you're very familiar with. And when you see Jesus saying, in quotes, I am. Press the pause button. Yeah, and stop and go, okay, hold on. I don't know Greek, but I remember Pastor John and Pastor Patrick talking about this. This is an ego a me statement. Mm-hmm. Um, I should take note of this. Yeah. And, and and look at this that. Is important. Yeah, look at that too. Of what is, what is Jesus saying about himself, and what is Jesus saying about God? Because it, it is that real deeper understanding of, it's it's part and parcel. This is mm-hmm. you know, you know, Creator and Redeemer both speaking. Mm-hmm. You know, to to us, revealing to us what this is going. You know, what is happening. So the, those are really powerful statements. I mean, really, really powerful statements for how we understand who God is, who God is. today. Pray so. All right. Gracious God, you send your Son into the world to take on human flesh and blood, but also to reveal your glory to us as he is our Good Shepherd hearkening us back to your presence when we want to go astray, who is our living water and bread of life for those moments when we feel hungry and thirsty for righteousness and justification, where sin and death work us woe, but you give us new life. 
Lord, help us to see how you are revealing yourself to us today in your Son's work, in your Spirit's movement, and in your creative and redeeming work for all creation. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Take care.